What can't you do anymore because of your success? Go to any kind of local event without having 15, 20, 25 people try and rap at me. Mm. Yo, man, let me kick this freestyle out for you, Primo. Oh, my God. I can't. Man, what? <laughs> I can't go anywhere. Especially just some very recognizable, I guess. Like, people always want to fucking rap for me. Yeah. Like, That's cool. Like, I, I appreciate it. But, like, if you catch me out and about, like, at a function or something, I got a beer in my hand and shit, and I'm just yeah. chilling. Like, dog, I'm not working right now. I'm not trying to hear that bullshit. Yeah, Stop. yeah, yeah. Did anybody hit you with some fire though? You was like, yo, we might have to tap in. <laughs> uh maybe way back in the day. Yeah. I okay. couldn't say specifically who though. Okay, but that, okay. I mean, just because you can like spit, you know, a written a cappella like real good to me, doesn't tell me that you're a good artist. Like, what can we really True. put together in the studio? How can we push and market your music? You know, how do you manage yourself? Because a lot of mm -hmm. people think, oh, I'm the best rapper ever, best rapper ever. You might be, but who the fuck's listening to you? Where's your market? You know what? Well, I'm glad you said that because that, that brings it back to the producers. You know, a lot of us are like, man, my beats are hard. I'm fire. Why ain't nobody fucking with me? What do you got to say to those people that's like, oh, I'm fire. I'm dope. Goes right back to the first thing you asked me about. Don't Marketing. worry so much about that. I find you one or two artists that like your mm. beats mm. and start making music with them. Because mm. the, those artists are going to become a walking billboard for your beats. That's how it happened for me. People started hearing beats from artists that I was producing, like two or three guys. Like, oh, you got some more like that? You got some more like that? And it just snowballed and just grew. Bars. Y'all hear that? Simple. Mm -hmm. Man, we really complicate this stuff. It's like it's a, it goes down to hard work and consistency. It's fundamentals, it's bro. Fundamentals. It's freaking crazy. Let's see. Okay. Well, that just answered the question about uh, being able to command a higher price. Because like you say, you work with the artists, you build it up, you get your work out there. Yeah. So you just answer that. So yeah, y'all want to charge more. Start, start low, build an artist. Mm -hmm. and boom. I remember right. it was a time, I want to say like five years ago, where I was selling beats for 20 bucks. Mm. Mm. They came across my Facebook memories a couple of weeks back. I was like, wow. Like, you really used to be able to get a beat off me for 20 bucks. That's crazy. I did see that. I did see that. I did see that. Has, has the client, like the type of client change? Like, as the price go up, do you get a different kind of client? Yes. Or what's different about the client? Well, what's different is when you talk about more high end clientele and buyers, I mean, A, they got more budget to work with, but B, they're more into investing in their sound. They're not trying to steal beat off YouTube and then pay 600 for a video. They're trying hmm. to own the beat, you know, get the publishing and everything right. It's just a more serious caliber of clientele, not necessarily a hobbyist for people that think that they can really take it to the next level. 